Começou. Você fazer tudo. Né? Tem que curtir, joga é. o DL. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. We have some dev Q&A. There's going to be a few of these, and we are starting with none other than Jonathan. Como é que está o áudio, galera? It's been a pretty exciting start to the day. Tá bom? Absolutely. I mean, it was much more exciting for me <laughs> up on stage there, man. It's a, uh, yeah, it's quite a thing. It is quite a thing. I think uh, I think people seem very happy with what they've heard about oh, PoE2. I really hope so. Yeah, like there was a huge amount of work that went into uh, getting all that stuff sorted out. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely glad it went okay. Apart from the uh, the minor death incident, but uh, should, be, well, should be all right. That's part of Path of Exile. That, absolutely. I should hope so anyway. Well, soon enough, uh, people here at ExileCon will get to play it a little bit. We'll have some gameplay showcases mm -hmm. even right after this, actually, with, with Zizaran. That should be pretty fun. But first, uh, I personally had a few questions about PoE2 and uh, hope Hopefully, those will answer some questions that many of you have. And uh, if no. not, again, uh, there will be more dev interviews throughout the event. All right, why don't we kick it off here? So um, we saw that uh, PoE2 in the demo, it was a little bit slower gameplay paced than what people experience if they play Path of Exile 1 right now. Right. But from what I've seen in the gameplay showcases, you guys generally try to slow it down for the purpose of the showcase. That's true. That's so, true. So what is what is the goal, I guess, is the question. So do we want to change Path of Exile 2 pacing versus Path of Exile 1? Um so to be honest, it will be a little bit slower, um, but kind of not at the 50, sorry, to get technical, but not at the 50th percentile. Like, I think that uh, part of the issue is um, in POE 1 is that like, there's so many multiplicative mechanics that go on that, like, at the sort of 95th percentile, at the top end of player, you get this, like, absolute ridiculousness with, like, you know, 600 projectiles per second and that sort of shit. And it's like, well, you know, it's like... 600 projectiles per second, it's like you just can't see fucking anything. And so you don't have any ability to respond to boss mechanics. Like, I don't think it's as fun as when you actually have, you know, like Unclean. 60 projectiles per second or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, we still want it to be ridiculous. It's just that we don't want it to be, like, at the very top end, you don't want it to be quite quite as ridiculous as it is. Yeah. And it's honestly just so that you actually get some interesting counterplay with the bosses. You get some more, some more, some more like, stuff going on there. Um, and so that's kind of a thing uh, that, that we like to do. But then we also do always tend to keep it a little bit slower in the showcases just because, you know, as yeah. you're saying, you want to see what's going on. You want to show people what's happening. Um, and uh, so, yeah, like basically, we're, for, like we were using um, uh, like a lot it's in the demos as well. Here, there's a lot of like two-handed weapons, which are a bit slower. Just once again, to sort of get the idea of the. Well, that's what I use. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's like uh, you know, basically, we're just we're, we're just we try to show off the the game because it looks nicer for like when you're especially when trying to appeal to a new audience. Mm -hmm. You want to show it off as best as you can. The bit slower just makes it look a bit nicer. But um, I mean, at the same time, we're seeing that you know we've still got like all the triggering mechanics and like uh, triple casting and all that sort of stuff. Like all that stuff really uh, will allow you to do the kind of ridiculousness that you expect from Poe still for sure. Like I certainly wouldn't want you to like I still want a player to feel like oh I totally broke the game with this bullshit that I'm that I'm doing here. You know like it needs to feel like you still broke it, uh, just not actually break it. Like you know I don't want the servers to actually be on fire. Uh, <laughs> Like they sometimes. <laughs> well, <laughs> if it's days. just for a little while, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's worth the moment. Right, right. Um, a big one is uh, the. I heard the audience kind of, you know, wooing when they saw gold dropping off yes, of the monsters. Yes, that's a funny one. Uh, uh, yeah, we never even mentioned it at the keynote, and it's funny because it's like, like it's not exactly like some big headline feature of you know, oh, there's gold in this game. Who's ever heard of that, right? It's obviously, you know, yeah, it is what it is. Um, Of all the things that we did in PoE 2, I would say that that's like the only what that's the like every other decision we make. We're like, is this does this feel like PoE or does it feel like not PoE? And like the gold thing is probably the only thing where we're like, this isn't really a PoE thing, and we acknowledge that. Um, but at the same time, um, I think it, it is actually important to make uh, drops the drop system better. Like uh, it like okay, it's like fundamentally you have this constraint. If you're going to kill a monster and it drops nothing, it feels like shit. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, like if you so therefore if you have to drop something, you can't obviously drop a rare on every freaking monster you kill. So therefore you have to be able to drop something. And honestly, gold does actually work. Like there's a reason games have it. Uh, but the important thing that we don't want to do with gold is have a, a have an economy based around it. Like it is supposed to not be something that um, you know like people. I don't expect people players to be trading with gold to each other. Um, they're going to be trading with other currency items as 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 you would hope they would in in, in PoE. Like that's our thing. Um, well, I guess the follow up question would be what what do you did want someone to use gold for. Um, so the main thing they should be using gold for nada. is fixing, like, especially the yeah. campaign, fixing yeah. their efficiencies and their build. Like, if you need this thing, to build, you know, if you need like, the right resistance, if you need something like that. Um, we've, changed, we've overhauled the shop very significantly um, so that there's much more likely yeah. to be things inside the shop that will be able to deal with problems that you have. Like if you're fighting a boss, you don't have the resistances, you should be able to deal with that very quickly. Um, there's also rares that you can find in there sometimes um, for certain things. And uh, we also make it so that it doesn't change every level. Like you, you get new stuff getting added to the 
shop that sticks around for a while so that you get a okay. chance to actually save up and buy it if you see something that you want. Um, and uh, there's also gambling. Um, so like, uh, you know, uh, by gambling, I mean like buying a, buying an, a, a base type where you don't know what uh, rare it will be, will be. And you will be able to get uniques that way. Um, so okay. that's, uh, that's similar to Ruthless with gold. Absolutely. It? Well, there's a reason we were testing this, right? We oh, were like, I see. see what's going on here. Like, we want to see if it actually works, like when players are exposed to it. Um, so uh, that, well, that was absolutely a test. We were like, let's see, can Peer we even work with gold in it? Like, you know, and there's been some changes since we did the Ruthless with gold test. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was just interesting to see uh, what, what happens. Yeah, personally, I actually really <coughs> like Ruthless with gold. Right. The, the, the one thing I didn't like very much was the uh, currency conversions through the vendors was disabled. Yes. So I was sitting on hundreds of jewelers, but I just needed like three fusings. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so th there's definitely been tweaks since then. Um, and there's definitely great feedback. Like, it's one of the, the, the whole reason we ran Ruthless was gold was, with, with Gold was to absolutely see, like, what sort of shakes out. It's very hard to do those kinds of tests in the office because it's, like, the amount of play time yeah. you'd have to have to, like, work out whether the economy is going to work is, is pretty extensive. So, uh, so yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin it all, all the way different outside of mechanics on this one. Mm -hmm. um, my first time in New Zealand was coming to ExileCon the mm -hmm. first time around, and it was a wonderful experience. And it was really the first time that I, I, I realized just how much of New Zealand themes and culture kind of exist, at least in part, in Path of for Exile. Sure, sure, yeah. And it was such a wonderful thing to see. Like, I would go to a museum, and then I, I'd, I'd see something that was quite similar to what yeah. I've been playing for years in Path of Exile. <laughs> so how, how forward is <laughs> this in Path of Exile 2? Um, uh -huh. I would say even more so. I mean, the Kurui have an entire act um, about them. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, it's uh, obviously, you know, we're inspired by the stuff we see. And honestly, it's really nice to be able to, you know, like take inspiration from what we see around us. Like, we never see the stuff in games. Um, you know, there are, um, there's an, there, there are islands which like are full of like the sort of New Zealand vegetation that I guess Americans <laughs> uh, don't, uh, tend, to, tend, to, tend to see very often. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have all the stuff and make all that stuff. And, you know, like, just, yeah, it's just great to have some, uh, some of that stuff going on. That's awesome. Um, back to a, a few mechanics, mm -hmm. and again, I want to reiterate that you know our information right now is just what we saw in in the gameplay mm -hmm. highlight in the presentation. We might see a little bit more from the players mm -hmm. around, um, but we saw that in in the presentation mm -hmm. there were just I think three life flasks and two life. mana flasks on each right. of the characters. Um, is that just because they're kind of low level, or is there going to be more of a focus on the life and mana flasks? Um, I mean, I don't know that I'd still call it a focus, but at the same time, we do want to make sure that um, life and mana flasks aren't useless. Mm -hmm. um, like they should actually have a purpose. Um, there was some changes to utility flasks uh, because we wanted to make sure that. Um, let me get this exactly right. Um, we removed. Uh, we tended to, to remove things kidding. that um, lasted for a duration from utility flasks, so the utility flasks are more responsive to the situation. Um, so, for example, if you are currently burning, then if you use um, a flask to get rid of that, then uh, it will give you, um, it will remove the burning and make you immune for a while, but if you don't have burning on you right now, it doesn't do that. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that we're doing to sort of make it so that there's some like use, like counterplay going on with it, rather than just, I just have it on all the time, it's effectively just another effect on my character. Well, you have that kind of as the affix system in PoE 1 right now. Yes, sorry, I I think I'm not up to date with PoE 1. Uh, yeah. so I, I think <laughs> generally that system is pretty okay. well received. Right, okay. So that's, so that's good to hear. Right, that's exactly the kind of stuff though that, I mean, so that change, if it's in PoE 1 now, that was definitely a like PoE two thing, and okay. they, I think they took it. Like, so the thing is, is they, so so just because people don't probably don't know this, I'm not involved in PoE one at all mm -hmm. at this point. I'm game director on PoE two. I'm focusing on that. Um, and then Chris, uh, we talk obviously <laughs> about designs that we're doing, and uh, he definitely, uh, you know, I suspect that some of those things so just filter their way like, down. So that's how you're doing yeah, flash. Yeah, exactly, right? Take that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so uh, Chris, Chris is in charge of PoE one, and he. <laughs> Foram tantas as mudanças que nós ficámos perdidos. Eu quero voltar na mana situação um pouco, porque nós temos a separação de mana para as skills e mana para a reservação com auras. Um, what kind of focus are you going to put on mana? Like, if, if you just took away auras from being mana-based in PoE 1 right now, uh, everyone just has just way too much mana exactly, for everything. Exactly, exactly. So we will, uh, costs will absolutely go up. And part of the th problem, balance problem that we have is we pretty much just can't really balance skills with yeah. mana use particularly easily um, in, PoE and in PoE 1 so. because there's just this expectation that everyone's going to reserve as much as they can. And the thing is, because reservation exists, it means that people are going to always push the line as far as they can, and then they start complaining if then skills cost too much. Of course. Uh, that uh, they don't have any freaking mana. And it's like, well, yeah. But So you'd think you'd be able to say, oh, yeah, well, that's your problem. But we've realized a, a much more sort of, you know, uh, I guess once you learn uh, about our player psychology, <laughs> you realize that, no, you have to actually, if you want that not to happen, like people always 
spend down to the line. So you have to do something about it. So um, spirit is the response to that. And uh, it means that now um, you, know, you, you have an amount of spirit to spend. Um, if you want to make trade-offs on your build, then those trade-offs should be made in your passive tree rather than being a, a, a sort of like thing that you're, that you're doing. That. So you still get to make that choice of like, do I want, um, you know, like, do I want to get more mana on the tree or not? I mean, there's also the, the scepters. Scepters um, give spirit as well. And that's how that escalates through the game. So um, if you're playing a minion build, it's very likely, you don't have to, but it's very likely you'll want to use scepters to, um, uh, to, to help with that. Um, well, as a as a minion enjoyer, I it was it was the, it wasn't said for more than a split second, but I yeah, caught yeah. that minions are going to reserve spirit. They do, yes. That's the, okay. so you'll be able to have um, more. So if you want more minions, get more spirit. That's the that's the way. So the, uh, we we trying mostly mm -hmm. to avoid having like uh, hard limits on like mm -hmm. number of zombies. You can just cast as many zombies as you have spirit to cast them. Um, so then it's sort of up to you to choose uh, what the oh, sort of yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that's of that's actually that's asking that's if that's there's a way where you can have enough spirit to summon like all the available minions, kind of like uh, a Lord of the Dead I, type of situation. It should be possible if you spec correctly to be able to do that. Okay. Um, the other thing with Scepters, by the way, as a base type, is that um, all of the mods of them are all um, like does this to nearby allies. Um, oh, I so see. So that means that Scepters are a great, uh, like they're sort of like a, a minion supporting uh, thing, but also just like for auras and stuff like that as well, since they give you the spirit. Um, you can choose to be like a Templar, you know, with like a flail in one hand and a Scepter in the other. That's like a, a, a viable thing. Or the yeah, minions or whatever. <laughs> Uh, here, but, uh, well, just, back you know, back I mean, to the other side of Spirit, I kind of wanted to know if there was a different design in Auras, because in, in POE 1, the they have, yeah, sta, they're, they're kind of the crushing your mana pool. Right, it's right. really hard to use more than like 2, 3, maybe 4 if right, you're right. heavily invested. Uh, because depois, yeah. now you obviously expect mm. everyone to use some form of right. Auras. But you'll uh, notice the cast on the trigger gems also reserve Spirit. Oh. And so then the choice between triggering versus Auras is now also a potential trade-off. I see. Uh, so there's like there's other stuff going on. Like, there's trying to like we really want to make sure that there are different, like entirely different styles of things you can use your spirit for. So then it definitely feels like you know, I mean, obviously you can try to do more than one of those things by just getting more spirit if that's what you want to do in your build. But um, it's still like you know, there's definitely a lot more sort of interesting options there about uh, how to how to how to trade one off for the other. Well, right now in Poe One, you can get like an enormous amount of damage, or honestly, in some cases, all of your defensive capabilities through your auras. Right, right. Do you foresee having such? I mean, that can certainly High power be, levels. That, that can certainly be a way, right? Like once again, if you get a, so I mean, I think the numbers right now is like you can get like uh, you, you might you start with a hundred spirit and aura reserves a hundred spirit, but you can get like, and probably I shouldn't even quote me on these numbers. I think you get like six hundred spirit from a from oh, a scepter. So it's like you can get you can still if you want if that's where you want to go you can you can go that way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I I never want to be the kind of person who's just like now nah, we're restricting everything we don't want players to do it. No, like we we want you to be able to if you want to spec into something you should be able to go hard on that thing and get like a lot of it right. So uh, yeah. Um, I have a couple questions with the dodge dodge roll. Yes, I guess we'll, let's let's tie the first one into the minion build. So right now in POE one, it's it's kind of swerving a little bit away from that, where there's a lot more active minion builds, but there's right. still passive minion builds. Right, right, right. We still have skills like righteous fire, mm -hmm. dot builds. There's a lot of time in between using skills. Mm -hmm. So with a spammable dodge roll in POE two. Do you foresee some builds that are just like nonstop dodging around the boss while doing passive damage? I mean, it could be a, it, it, it could it could be something that you do, um, but I'm hoping that we can provide enough things. Like, so I mean, ideally, the balance produces the most fun outcome, right? Like, ideally, like, okay, sure, you could just dodge roll around the boss and kill it eventually, but you're probably going to want to use... Like, it's funny, I've actually had conversations with designers, like, oh, yeah, this is the only skill I'd ever use. And like, okay, but then if you just did this, uh, then, you know, it increased your damage by this, and, and you get this effect. And like, oh, yeah, you know what, I guess I'll just add that in, too. And then you have that, and then they're like, oh, yeah, but then if you added this skill, you know, like, now you'd be able to do this as well, and that would just... And it's like, oh, yeah, well, I guess I could use that skill, too. It's like, we kind of want to promote the balance so that it, you always feel very much like, oh, yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, I just want to add this extra thing, and I just want to add this extra thing and then pretty soon you've got like a whole ruckus of skills on your character okay. uh, that are all, you know, th that all have a purpose and all feel like they've got useful in certain situations. And especially with the way the skill system works now, where you can have nine, six links, um, you know, like uh, there's, there's, it's okay to just have some skills that you just use rarely, right? That are just in the right situation, they're useful. Well, I wanted to ask about that a little bit later, but since you're touching okay. upon it, uh, what determines the links on the skill gem? Right, right. Oh, so basically, every uh, gem when you first get it starts with uh, two uh, uh, sports sockets, and then, and then um, you find a uh, um, you find a jeweler's uh, a lesser jeweler's orb to add to, to go from uh, two sports. Okay. And then there's a jeweler's to go from uh, three to 
four, and then a gr- uh, Grand Masters. I can't remember the name of it, but okay. Grand Masters jewels or something like that that goes from um, from uh, from four to five, and then obviously five sockets uh, in a in a gem is the same as a six linkers uh, and oh, only one, so five five supports one one active. Um, so basically, you find those, um, and uh, the the one to go up to the six link equivalent is quite rare. Like that's still the like chase thing, but instead of having like ridiculous numbers of fusings uh, that you're dropping into an item uh, that you're dropping into an item it's like you know you, you, you will just find one eventually and then that's you know and because you want to six link all your items they have to be common enough that you can like you know you, but but it, getting the quest for all six links on your character is still like a thing that you know you're going to want to do and you know there's some that, get some that sounds like a lot so many more options when right. when, when you when you're factoring I that think way. so yeah well, they're going to do the gameplay demo, I think, in about 15 minutes. Uh, I think the PoE 2 gameplay demo is going to be Zizeron that tackles it the first time. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Maybe he finds some of these items. Uh, I th- Yes, I think he might be able to. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, that should be pretty <laughs> interesting. Um, backing into kind of the, the, the dodge system. Mm-hmm. Um, so in, in Ruthless right, right now, um, they just have the dash. It's a very limiting movement Right, right, right. So this is very, very different from the dodge roll. Yeah, yeah, and and in Ruthless, we get the dodge roll, which is almost like a spammable version of it. And the skills themselves have a movement component, and it's not just for the melee characters. Yep. As you as you noted with, with Comet on the Sorcerer, yep. um, it, it kind of pushes you back a little bit if you want it to. Mm-hmm. Um, this kind of brings up my question of, do we need skills like Flame Dash? Will there be strictly movement-based skills? Um, I don't personally feel that they're hugely necessary. Um, like there should be enough mobility uh, in just what you're doing that it feels okay. I, like a, a large number of melee skills have dashes or closes and like various other things. Like depending on the skill, like obviously different archetypes are a bit different, but um, every every one, no matter what weapon you're using, will have some kind of access to like uh, stuff that allows you to get around the battlefield uh, quickly. Um, it's just that like um, there's ways to do that where it feels natural without kind of making it so that it gets to this insane degree that um, things can sometimes get if you let it get out of control um so like i mean all the things like the um for example like the um the monks killing palm you can go really far with that thing but you have to go to an enemy so it kind of inherently means that you kind of get the uh, like it sort of it works really well for mobility and combat without kind of making it so that you're just constantly going jing 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 jing, jing like everywhere you know um so uh yeah you kind of we want to make it still feel right well and, and like and like intuitive and, and fun and mobile without kind of having that just like you're constantly spamming movement skills to the point where you can't even see what the hell you're doing uh, kind of thing. Well, from the so gameplay, people will try out ex- at ExileCon and yeah, from the live demo that you will see, see um, hopefully we'll get some opinions and we'll see right, right. how people feel around it. I mean, honestly, the major reason, like one of the huge things about Dodge Roll for me, like the biggest thing that I'm excited about is the, is the Dodge Roll. Because what it means is that um, like just that whole, like, I'm not losing control of my character. It's just a huge, really, really important thing. Once you've got that, it's very hard to do that. Like, uh, you've got, you've got just like, there's no lock in, there's none of that. Like, it means also that we can make some skills that are slower because it's okay, right? Like, if you, you cannot make the slow skills, if you did, it would just lock you in for so long, it would feel terrible. They put it on a mic, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, like, the ability to actually be able to use a tactic as a balance tool again, um, by having this and that. It's a question that they put it on the gold, right? Yeah. It just really improves that kind of stuff, so it means that we can have fun. Um, um, I wanted to ask é, about the, the weapon swap system. Kind yep. of, it's more of like a dual weapon. It is system. kind of a dual specking thing. Yeah. Yes. E outra, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, you noted how Diablo you can get a lot of the power in Diablo 4. Agora, since falta depois de Diablo 3, só de Diablo 3, uh, entendeu, velho? Tipo, é, é a vida é yep. assim, cara. And the power that you unlock from yeah. the passive skill tree. Yeah, yeah. But um, also, the weapons just kind of seemed like more powerful in general like getting a spammable skill on on a, on a sork getting the unleash it, it just seemed like there was possibly more weapon power there's more power from your from your gear centered on your weapon than maybe poe one is that there is, is that a there is the a goal? little bit more balance in that direction um it's not like hugely uh it's not like so we thought that, like, so I think uh, we sort of, uh, ma- so spellcasters, um, we tried to get, yeah, make the weapon a bit more of a focus. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's, it's, you, like, spellcasters right now in POE, uh, in, P- in POE 1, like, the weapon, I mean, obviously it matters, but it doesn't matter that much. Yeah. Uh, whereas we want, we want to boot up. Now, we still want to have the distinction between, uh, you know, attack builds and caster builds, and the weapon still matters more in, um, in, in, on, on attacks than, than caster builds in, in POE 1, uh, in POE 2 still. But um, we did want to get that focus up a little bit more. And at the same time, we also wanted, and this is kind of a subtle thing that probably most people won't even notice, but uh, we, we made it so that the, uh, the, the skill gem level on attack skills also the matters more uh, on attacks okay. as well, uh, yeah. which is currently in POE 1 that really does doesn't matter very much at all. Some of them have like a flat damage component. Yeah, some of them do. We actually, like, I actually do have it as a goal to make it so that um, 
uh, like most of the time you're going to want to use the higher level versions of uh, of things, and that's actually partly to make attribute requirements actually matter a little bit. Um, uh, you know, which is and, and as a, just a random side division, just by the way, talking about attribute requirements. Uh, we, the way that support gem attribute requirements work now is that the amount that the of the attributes attributes that a support gem uh, uh, sorry, the attribute requirement for support gems is additive to the skill gem. Oh. So that means that if you want, if you're playing a dex build and you want to use like you know five int supports, that actually becomes quite uh, tricky now, uh, based entirely on the attributes. We had to do it that way because um, uh, because we don't have the whole uh, thing where you have to re like because there's not the off color socket re-rolling mechanic anymore. There has to be some way to make it so that using uh, off class stuff is like a little bit harder. So because of because of the way that that works now, uh, the attribute requirements matter a little bit more for yeah. Like you should be able to easily get the attributes for stuff that's on class, but the stuff that's off class is harder because the attributes sort of make well, it a bit harder. Personally, I really like that because right now you have the limitation on number of number of skill gem links right, based right, on right. the items. Which has its disadvantages, yeah, but yeah, now you're sure. going away with that. You need other kinds of limitations for to sure, prevent sure. just unlimited character right, right, power. Right, right. So, yeah. I think that's a really clever way of doing it. I'm actually really, really happy to hear that. Cool. Uh, another direction on this one. So we saw Alva show up in, in yes. the demo. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure this is still probably something you're discussing internally. So. I'm not sure how much you want to share, but uh, are we expecting many familiar faces or uh, league mechanics Opa. in there are, too? Well, I mean, for a, for, for a start, as we've already said, uh, certainly league mechanics, many many of them will have revamped versions in PoE2. Okay. Um, the uh, obviously, like, so the main <laughs> the main problem, honestly, is like. Like you see an old particle effect next to a new one, and it's like, okay, we have to update that. You know, and this is pretty much soon you're like, have to update, have to update it. Like all these things <laughs> sort of go on. Um, but absolutely, um, I mean, we are we are going to be like canon correct as far as like the ages of people with regard to POE one versus POE two. Um, but Alva is a time traveler, uh, so oh, I see. <laughs> we get uh, we get away with a bit more uh, with a bit more there. Oh, that's um, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, so one thing that has actually, in my opinion, really defined Path of Exile and kind of pushed the RPG genre is uh, the different game modes in which you can play new content in equally. Mm -hmm. So you, you've always had, uh, you know, hardcore and softcore, but we also have solo self found. Now we have ruthless, mm -hmm. uh, which is very exciting for me personally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a ruthless enjoyer personally. Yeah, yeah. Um, will these game modes continue on in PoE2? Um, so we're certainly going to have hardcore. Okay. We're certainly going to have solo self-found. I don't see why we wouldn't. Um, ruthless probably shouldn't be necessary. I mean, I'm sure there'll come a point, like once the balance of PoE2 becomes ridiculous over, over 10 years, where we'll be like, oh crap, you know, we need to <laughs> have like a thing for old school Path of Exile 2 players to enjoy or something like that. But uh, yeah, for now, I don't see that. I don't think that we would need it. Um, but uh, definitely, um, the thing is, we don't want to split the community too much because you want like people to be able to actually you know like have people to play with and all that sort of stuff i mean obviously not for solo self found which is why it kind of can exist as a as a thing but um yeah don't want to split it too much but um yeah certainly hardcore and solo self found are absolutely going to be there uh, when I heard the announcement that PoE2 was going to be a separate game from PoE1, yep. uh, initially it's exciting, and then it's like, but wait. And then you say the microtransactions that you have, the, the skins, they kind of follow into PoE2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, that's that's really fantastic. That's a really clever way of doing it and mm -hmm. keeping them separate games. And and, 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 uh, and it's worth mentioning, it, it, to me, the more exciting thing is honestly the future. Like, the fact you can buy m stuff that, like, late, like, made after PoE2 comes out and have it in PoE1 again, right? Yeah. The thing is, like, I want to, like, and the reason we're doing all that stuff is I really want to make sure that people feel like, um, you know, like, well, it's, it's like, we want to make sure that our company, like, doesn't feel incentivized to abandon POE1. And by making it so that we have this policy, it means that we're always like, you know, like, POE1 will always be a thing that's, like, important to us because it's, like, it's not like, you know, just some random product in the back corner which no one cares about. Like, it's actually a thing that, like, you know, has supporter packs and there's mm -hmm. things you can get. And, you know, like, people actually want to, you know, like, that's actually, that's actually a thing. So, yeah, I just want to make sure that our company, like, does sort of, like, still not treat, do POE1 dirty, you know? Like, it needs to, it needs, it needs to sort of, like have a good future for as, as well, in my opinion. Well, it seems pretty good to me. I'm excited to play next yeah. league. But I guess the the, the follow-up to that, I, the one thing that I was like a little bit worried of, mm -hmm. if I end up liking PoE2 way more, and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm still going to play PoE1, but if it's I end up playing PoE2 a lot more than I play PoE1, which I think is I mean, I, I would hope possible. so, being the director of PoE2. <laughs> um, uh, the race rewards. I'd love to be able to at least use their skins in PoE2. Right. You thought of doing anything well, like so that? Well, so basically yeah, anything in the microtransaction stash is something we'll you'll be able to use. To so it would depend on whether or not at some point uh, Chris gets around to implementing the thing where you can pull them off and turn them into a skin. No, you'll so, you'll that's you'll the case, not the case. I'm sure it'll work in PoE2. Anything in the microtransaction stash, that's what we're going to do. All right. Well, we are going to jump into the... 
the gameplay for PoE 2 very soon here with Zizeron. Eu não queria que a galera uh, sentisse que eu estava abandonando o PoE. Já vamos continuar por os dois. And have you made it yet in PoE 2? Um, that's a really hard question because you're basically saying you got 30 like, seconds. I got oh Jesus Christ! I always, I always hate <laughs> these ones because it's like you know we made all these classes and uh, but I think probably like the main one of the main reasons that we went with the whole like like two classes per um, per per, per th uh, attribute, attribute combination thing was because of the druid. It's like we wanted to have a druid and there just wasn't a class that it made sense for. And we're like, okay, we have to find a way to make it so a druid can be a thing. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, that's what we came up with. All right, so, uh, well, yeah. I hope you nailed it. Thank All you right. so much Thank for watching, so guys. Yeah. We'll see you in a second. Thank you. Okay, but